Alright. Well, I guess let's bide our time. Pull up with your companions until the stars align once more. Everyone, the amenities are modest here at Moonlight Elko, but I suggest you get comfortable. We may be here for some time. A small landing on the dark side of the mountain. For many years, Volford smuggled supplies and furnishings to this well-hidden locale. <laughs> Just to make himself comfortable between the trials? I guess so. As for myself, I have some business to attend to. Please leave the wagon in my care for now. It shall be ready by when you need it next. From the mountaintop, you can see all across the downside. It's impossible expanse staring back at you. The thought occurs to you that you may never see another land besides it. And so, you and your companions wait upon the mountaintop in quiet solitude, anticipating when the cycle of the rites begins to turn again. Then, you shall have another opportunity to free one of your own. You may earn back their freedom, one by one. Many moons pass. Then, one evening... May I have a moment, reader? The lone minstrel finds you poring over the Book of Rites. As has been your leaning through the stay at the, his abode. At uh, this abode. Oh, so is it just automatically giving you a point because you've spent so much time poring over your book? Or does it actually recognize you No, 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 it said new do? chapters. So we can read more chapters from the, like, the different scribes. Oh. Begging your pardon, but there's something you may wish to see. Please follow me. You follow him into the cold night. Look forth, reader, sir. The stars shine like you have never seen. Once more, the path towards salvation is revealed. But now, something is different. Is there a hole? A void? There's a big ol' hole. Okay. But all of them... All of them are available, so you get to choose your order. Each prior time you searched the stars, they showed you a single path, but now several rites avail themselves to you at once. Henceforth, you may choose from several different rites. Solium, the golden star. The golden star is faint over the fall of Solium. Oh, that, that's the star that you always need to choose at the very end. Okay. So, oh, that's interesting. The Withdrawn are at Trieste now, rather than the Harpies? I guess so. Okay, and what about the other ones? So Udmil Udmilda is there. Oris. Okay, so they've changed to the C1. The Fate- wait, what about Fate? The Fates and Delbert oh, are there. Oh, the Fates, okay. Yeah, Delbert. Delbert holds heart. And your record against them is 1 and 0. Or we can go after the Accusers again. Those were your initial rivals. I kind of want to go back and fight uh, the accusers. Start from the beginning. Move really? Up, maybe. Well, what are the other stars? Where's Where's Ignarius and the other people? They're not available yet. Not available yet. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, it's either... I suppose it's whoever you have an interest well, here, more in. Let's go with uh, Dalbert. Okay. Um Worst comes to worst, if I lose, it's, it's a good ending because I like Dalbert. And his son. Yeah, and his son. And uh, this this will let us kind of know what we we should do. I don't know. Because anyway. I don't like Lendl. No. Hopefully we can do all of them, though. The stars urge that we go to the Hulk of Oris a long way off. Wolford, sir, how are we to reach the Hulk of Oris in... Due course of time. You know full well, Tariq. Pr preparations are complete. Wait, does this thing turn into a flying plane? wagon? Probably. You think? Oh wait. You think you see the lone minstrel smile ever faintly, but cannot be sure. Please ask the others to gather their belongings, rest, and then assemble at the wagon. There at dawn, we shall be departing at that time. As you will, sir. The cycle begins anew. As the years advance, you'll find there ought to be fewer rites this time, until once more we are to traverse the scribe's gate. Exactly how many is difficult to say, but our next chance at liberty ought to present itself much sooner than later. So let's be ready for it. Now then, see you in the morning, reader. Your companions have not traveled far from Moonlight Alcove. Word of the news soon spreads throughout the group. 
Well, continue your journey. Next morning, Wolfred calls everyone together before the Black Wagon. This old wagon is more than it appears. With Bertrude's aid, it escorted you across the sea to me. Now it shall escort us anywhere the stars require. Come and see. Wolfred beckons you to join him in the wagon. Ooh, what's the crystal? And, and the we jar? We've got a couple of things. Something has changed about the wagon's interior. What looked before to be old cracks and signs of age now expose various intricate components once hidden from view. You are the night wings. You should travel in their customary way. Ha, wings. He turns to you, indicating levers and devices marked with symbols from the book. Now, reader, whenever you're ready, you may take us up. I'll show you how. And everyone else, hang on to something. <laughs> take off! <laughs> it's cute. After having soared into the sky, the black wagon remains aloft somehow. Never thought I'd soar like this again. Oh, by the scribes! Hey, now we're talking! The night wings sail the skies again, wheresoever the stars may call for them. There is one catch. The downside provides a few locales provides few locales suitable for landing, though we should find at least a couple landing places near where we're going. We'll then make our way by land or sea to our destination. Now, without further ado, let us proceed. The black wagon fly! Sail the skies! Oh, I see. So the next right, the Hulk of Horus. Your destination, the right soul, will soon commence here, and the stars themselves are to be believed. So follow this location, the next right. The carcass of the doomed... Yeah. So, that's not new. Of the doomed exploring vessel Dabrazan, or whatever yeah. it was called. Interesting that we can, like... Sort of sail around and pass oh, things. Oh! I actually have free control over this, and I can boost. Which looks worse. Oops! Wait! She's traveling, too? You can hear the angry hissing from Udmilte all the way from your position. He thinks, mayhaps, the skies belong to ye. Foolish. The skies and everything above them and below belong to the astral born. Ye shall be smitten from his skies on his awakening. Now, be gone. Interesting. So Wait. we've got a couple of things here. I'm curious what the symbols are. Maybe that's where the others are having their rights? Yeah, maybe. Oh. Chastity. Well, that's the chastity. Point of interest. Something about this strange island you see below you draws your attention. Best to avert your gaze of the Isle of Kaelmer. Even the scribes themselves sought to avoid the place. Let us fly on. A uh, forbidden island <laughs> nestled in the Deathless Tempest. It has significance to the eight scribes. Interesting that the chastity were there. It looks like it has a face. Yeah, maybe. Well, we have to go below the tempest. Well, there's a ragged rock, and what's that? An item? The Hulk of Horus. It has drifted up here upon the sea for longer than one might expect. Perhaps if, of, if you've already read the of the doomed ship's demise in the embrace of the unfathomed Plurnus. Some say, I guess Plurns? Some say- It was Plurnus. Oh, it was Plurnus? Okay. Yeah. Some say it was the sea itself which preserves the ship's remains, hidden properties within the water, sea creatures binding together the ruined planks of wood. Those such as yourself and the fate know another truth, I gather. The stars would not align over the wreckage if it did not have some greater significance than first appears. May you have good fortune there during the coming right. Um, looks like you can actually land. Yeah, so these are landing spots. Let's see. The south current towards the Hulk of Oris teams with... Oh, it's the fish again. Yeah. I just want to see if I could explore for a little while longer. We've got some POIs that I can check out. As you soar above the waters of Worm Gulf, you notice Sir Gilman sidle up to you very slowly. So the tempestuous Sea of Solus lies beyond this death still body of water. Exiled worms within the Sea Dominion naturally congregate around here. We are very, very, very high above the waters. If this knight is not mistaken, this knight's brethren lurk beneath the surface here in, un in numbers untold. 
Fortunately, if we were to come crashing to the surface now, this night, why, he would receive a watery burial in the custom of his kind. Whoa. Right, he's afraid of uh, heights. Yep. I just wanted to fly around and look this at POIs a little bit. This isn't going to use up days. I don't think Gertrude's it's going to. Place. Below amid the desolation of the flagging hands, you see Big Bertrudes, from which you first embarked by sea. You wonder how its venerable proprietor is faring. I'm certain that Big Bertrude must have left a strong impression on you all. She's not easy to forget. I've known her since before my exile. Or hers. She's been here a long time. Big Bertrude. She's a bog dweller once feared and respected in the Commonwealth for her sorceress work. I've sent my agents to repay her for assisting you. And to send her our regards. The old wagon must have been in need of some repairs. I just wanted to take a look at everything because, mm -hmm. I mean, we're free to fly around and do whatever we want for a bit. Ah! Eh? What is, what is that? You overhear Sir Deluge in a full-on panic as his fellow Worm Knights attempt to calm him down. What? What do you mean? It was the Nightwings! We are not to face them in our coming right again, are we? At some point, he realizes your wagon is aloft beside his own. You, you night wings! This night shall not forgive this transgression. Once we prevail against whichever adversaries are doomed to face us next, then we shall come for you. Yeah, why must this night be forced to fly so far above land or sea? <laughs> Cute. No. Oh. Be wise. You soar near the border of the sand folds, where your companions first found you in the downside long ago. There is nothing for you there, and you wish never to see it again. You forgot to highlight the sand folds. Oh, I'm sorry. It's lost to us. As you fly aloft over the area of Downside Prairie where your first path diverged, you see Jadariel peering down at the lands below. You took us through Hollow Root that first time, if memory serves, reader. Taking sides with Greentail rather than with me. It took me a considerable length of time after that point to come to the conclusion that you were not a complete fool. Hey, watch it there, Jody. My chums here here's a real discerning judge of character, and has a good sense of direction for that matter. We'd probably be all stuck in a bog had he listened to you back then. Oh, indeed. They both seem in good spirits, reminiscing about old times. Jadariel gain one hope. Oh, and Ruki. The next right. Awesome. See, good reason to explore. But Let's I wonder if you use it up one. for future. I don't things. know. I between each kind of right that we have here, I'm going to explore everything. If possible. I think it's fun that everyone else has little flying ships. And yeah. we're running into them. Okay. Oh, okay, so we got a couple of things we can do here. Right, because so we got we the have Ragged Rock, the Underkin Pass, and the Fathomless Trench. Well, let's like... see what they are. Because we know the Fathomless Trench just has fish. Okay, so the North Current towards the Hulk of Oris runs quick as the Underking Oris himself believes that the Eight Scribes shall bless you here. Faye does, okay. Okay. Uh, the South Current towards the Hulk of Oris teems with fish and other sea life. Sir Gilman insists that the waters along this path contain riches for those who can find them. So riches, a blessing, and what's the Ragged Rock? The North Current towards Stormwall passes by carcasses of ships long gone. Jadaria suspects you may find something of value along this route. Didn't we try Ragged Rock and got nothing? We tried Ragged Rock before and got nothing. We did the Fathomless Trench and got a fish for Tizo, but now Gilman says there might be More? stuff. I'm, I'm Under King to go... Pass might have a blessing. Yeah, so this will be a temporary boost. This is probably money, and this is maybe a trinket. I'm leaning for the trinket anyway. Okay, we can try it again. Just because I like trinkets. I like having variety of options. Okay, page revealed, the Sea of Solace. Hey, does this add log entries? It does. You touched down at the Sea of Solace where you first encountered Sir Gilman and the Pyrehearts. Led by the Worm Seer Deluge. I don't know what the difference is for the Pyrehearts. A triumvirate of Worm Knights who perceive the rights is great battle to be won. I don't know. As you make time to check the wagon's subsystems for signs of any excess strain resulting from your voyage through the skies, one of your companions gets your attention. 
Wow, that was exciting. Maybe someday you can fly us to the stars? Fay assists you in, with the remainder of the work, and together you conclude that everything seems to be in order. You soon shall carry on by sea. For now, you have some time to spare. Search for valuables. Well, we got the a couple Beyonder of things. The Beyonder Crystal seeks Tizo. Okay, and also Sir Gilman. We got a lot of things to do. Sir Gilman is shivering there after the Black Wagon's maiden voyage through the skies. Master Reader, this knight is very, very slightly out of sorts is all. He merely appears terrified, but he assures you that he is seemingly- uh, he, that his seeming cowardice is but an optical illusion in this case. Pamatha overhears and joins you. Flying's not for everyone, Sir Knight. This knight heartily concurs, how- though how anyone at all can stand it, he has yet to understand. Oh well, let's see. What's it like to swim the waters of the Sea Dominion? Ah! Those glorious, murky waters engulfed in hideous warfare, to be sure, but otherwise a joy to cut across, to feel the coolness of the waves beneath one's gill slits, and the like. Though this knight is now accustomed to this life above the surface. Flying's just the same, Sir Knight. It resists those of us not born to it. I, in turn, have wondered what your seas are like, but the thought of swimming fills me with disgust. Though, I haven't had to swim, and you now have to fly. That's very brave of you, and you handled it better than some harp fledglings I've met in my day. You'll get used to it. She departs, but you sense Sir Gilman is feeling better after the exchange. Sir Gilman gave one, gained one hope. For the next right. Yay! Yahoo! Okay, so we've got Wakingwood Wisps. The wisps inside provide a scarce bit of light when it is needed, all for a low monthly fee. A keepsake from Black Basin. River frost, so cold it can burn the skin, but keeps the wagon cool and food fresher longer. Keepsake from the Sclorian's shore. What's the jar down in the corner? Uh, one second. Uh, that those are, oh, old Raymond's handle. Okay, I guess I can't look at these. Grius stone. Exhibits a flagrant disregard for natural law, thus providing light entertainment. A keepsake from Mount Elodiel. Oh, it just likes to float around. Yeah, that jar right there. This one? No, no, no. To the left. This one? Yeah. I just read that. Oh. It's the Waking Wood Wisps. Oh, sorry. I was looking at the achievement, and it was all about characters talking with one another. Oh. That was cute. Okay, well, let's read the Book of Rights. I want to see if we've got any... Oh, hi. Okay, so we have more entries for Chapter 1, or is it Chapter... Oh, there are other, like... Yeah, so we can now read all the other scribes' entries. I want to see if we had any more from... Not chapter one, by the looks of it. Yeah, because no. that's about him saving the Emperor. Did we read this? No. Yeah, we did. We must have. Yeah, because he was saying, now you are an exile like me. <laughs> okay. Unfortunately... Well, this is living in exile, so this is new. Yeah. Isn't it? I just want to check a couple of things. So 25, 43. Yeah, so we've got a whole bunch of pages. I'm afraid to read these sections. Why? Because I don't know if we're, it's in the right order. I assume it is. Might as well. It's, it's just this ends at page 17. We're missing uh, four more entries. Maybe we just have to journey around the land to fill it out? Maybe, because we're missing 19... 21 and 23. So I guess we're missing three entries. Maybe if we land more places, we'll get more things? Yeah, I don't know. Living in XL. In the words of Jomer Manymane, the Alpha Chief. Uh, so just do like an old dog voice. Once I too roamed free, I remember well those days in which I was called Chief. I traveled all over on my four good paws, and I was well adored. I wanted to grow stronger. Here, at last, I have. I shall not mince my words. This place shall either harden you or kill you. It shall haunt you with many, with old memories. You share the exile's plight. My charge is to alleviate the sting of it for you a little bit, and to prolong your stay, but only for as long as needed. Your charge is to return. We shall call this place the downside for a reason, but in time, here you can learn to eat, to seek out shelter, and to find a certain beauty in unlikely places. What's up with you? Why are you hiccuping? Hiccups? I have no idea. Som sometimes when I'm like modulating my voice, it just immediately kicks me into hiccup mode. <laughs> I 
Okay, so the Seed of Solace. So this is Molten Mil Milith, the Wild Witch. Oh, okay, the Wild Witch? Milith. Beyond the shallow, sickly gulf, our voyage grew increasingly forbidding and much harder to explain. How could a sea exist here at the bottom of the world? We could not deduce whence sprang the carcasses of ancient sailing ships we found throughout the Sea of Solace, though the warning that they signified we duly noted. It was here we first met Oris, called the Under King, who brazenly assaulted our small skiff, for we had trespassed in his waters. But when the Under King relented, for he witnessed Soria Myrrh in all his dooming glory, Soon, he would side with us. Then, with the Underking, we sailed forth into a tempest beyond reasoning or measure. So, Celestial Landmarks. In the words of Luz Glorian, Hundred Minds, the scholar, Do you feel kinship with the stars? You owe your everything to them. Perhaps one day, even your freedom. I chased the stars across the river of my genealogy until it led me here. I demanded they explain to me the paradox of knowledge, for how is it that something can be shared but still contained within ourselves in its entirety? The stars did not respond, but they sent me on a quest. I sought the nine landmarks which they revealed to me so that someday I would reveal their mysteries to you. These landmarks, emissaries of the stars, are the nine lenses through which we see the land and see ourselves in a new light. Oh, also in the words of Yeah, Luz if you Glorian. notice it's shining, that means we actually have a couple of entries that we haven't read yet. The Book of Rites, in the words of Luz Glorian, yeah. Much can be said about the Sisters of the Arch, who we banished to the great beyond for deeds irredeemable. Suffice it that details of their banishment are written in this book. The Sisters and the book became inseparable, not unlike the stars. Their light and the infinite darkness that engulfs them. The stars communicate to us and y you in turn. The words within this book are but an edifice, a simple surface. Look past the text to the hidden meaning, to the hidden power. The stars above, they are not mere lights, they are not mere words. If you chance upon the sisters of the arch within their prison here, give them our thanks. So there's another one. Oh, Mount... This is Mount Elodio. Yeah. Okay. So this is Malith. Oh, Malith again. Gaining the summit of the sacred Mount Elodio involved no small amount of sacrifice and sorcery, in varying proportion. The mountain's energies were palpable. The sensation that we felt indescribable. The lands we stood upon were closer to the stars and to the world we knew. It was upon this highest point, in all the downside, that we first made efforts to concoct this tome, which you now read. It was there that we were stricken with a vision of the cycle of the rites, and felt, together for the first, a sentence of freedom unlike any we experienced before. But that is the subject which our comrade shall illuminate in greater detail. I want to check something with him. Okay, so nothing, no multiple pages there. Um, oh, interesting. Um, there, there's actually the first entry which we have missed. Oh, really? Yeah. Also, in the words of the of Molten Malice, the Wild Witch. Years upon long years, we spent distilling life essence from many things which all once writhed under the auspices of their mortality, which we ourselves cut short. In this we have no regrets, for we learned much, and so, we think, did they. We earned the title Witch, and were forced to flee into the downside. Here we encountered Solium Myrrh, and soon, we gained an understanding of each other. He bade us circumnavigate these lands and catalog our findings. We felt a strong desire to expose the secrets of this land. He wished to yield benefit to those who followed in our wake. Indulge us both, then. So 
So he only had two. All right. Who is this? Haub. Haub. <laughs> uh, nine remembrance in the words of Haub the Swallow, the Accursed. At first I found it much too difficult to read, much less write, even to grasp the quill, but the horned one, Myrrh, implored me. He said this is the greatest gift that he could give me in return. In return for what, I asked. In return for his life, he said. But I did not save your life, I said. You did, he said. We fight about this still. Myrrh is stubborn, more than I. Now, herein, and by his leave, I chronicle the nine triumvirates, for I am from this land, of this land, unlike the rest, who wish to leave. We knew not everyone could leave who wanted. Seldom would the opportunity arise. Thus, did we organize those striving for a chance into the nine sets of three. And that's it. And on the Commonwealth. What? What's up? What's wrong? Oh, I didn't know if you were, like, going to pause it or something. No, so that... let's finish reading the book. Okay. In the words of Triesta Tithis, the Blessed Born. We, the eight, assembled here together on the downside, and we gave our freedom so that you might yet have yours. It is an exchange we have not lightly made. It is my charge to ensure that you, should you regain your freedom, first off recognize its qualities and also use it wisely. You do not need a pair of wings in order to be free. My own wings once thought that I could take me they could take me anywhere, and then they took me here where I am bound. It is your charge to be free, and not to make the same mistakes. Spring from here! I learned what we did, and build a new and great society, a free society, with wings spread wide for everyone. Do we get another one? Nope. There's 149 pages in this book. Probably huh? more. 160? Well, okay. Well, we got a thing to do. Tizo. I was beginning to wonder when you would return. Okay, so first let's ask what's on her mind. Ah, my best friend in the world. Come to visit me again. Does it make you uncomfortable, perhaps? That I should call you thus? Perhaps you think that you do not yet know me very well. But I know you just fine. You reveal a great deal to me when you come visit me like this. You are not the only one who can sense things in others, you know. <laughs> she laughs to herself. One learns to read a bit when forced to suddenly appear within a book for 837 years or so. Especially if one is... If one is... Won't? Want. Oh, if... Oh, won't. So is it like... Is it want? Or? Yeah, yeah. It's, I believe it's want, want to pry a little. Oh, you yeah. understand. For it gets rather boring here. I know all about you. A, crippling, a crippled scholar who vowed to help his friends to be free again, only to end up spending all this time talking to an apparition stuck in a stone. Oh, I know about your loves, or your lack thereof, about your favorite pastimes, certain habits you may be somewhat loath to admit. My statuette collection is not to be, not to be mentioned. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just imagining we should like come up with this bizarre backstory for the scribe, seeing as he has technically none. <laughs> Fear not, of course. I use the special knowledge only as a means to entertain myself, I think. And if you don't like it, why? Just keep your distance. Like so many of your predecessors. As for the other Beyonders... They are as race, they're as race to me, and I must seem to all those idiots with whom you escort. I cannot confide, confide as easily with my own kind as I am able to confide in you. But I suppose that I have said too much. Thank you, as ever, for the visit. You have given me a lot to think about, more than you know. <laughs> she laughs again softly. Scribe trial! You need but choose among those unenlightened fools with whom you travel. Summon Tizo. 
Okay, do we give him anything else? Block, fling the orb. Oh, quickness is always nice. And yeah. he won't be able to fling it to anyone. Because there's also restore pyre, which is tempting. Because we could actually get it so that uh, Tizo can restore his empire, but I guess it doesn't matter. Not right now. He asks Aunt Sandra to administer one of her special trials for Tizo. Sandra. She's an apparition of the from the age of Emperor Solimur, who pursued him in his exile. So yeah, it's 837 years later. Mm-hmm. I dare think I remember something of that imp. He certainly stood out from all his ilk, although that really is not saying much. Well, let us bring him forth. Tizo soon appears in heat of the summons. <laughs> Tizo seems to be prepared for whatever lies ahead. For implosion. Mm. Which I have yet I have never used. <laughs> The apparition Sandra appears and unfastens her mask. Listen well, imp. You answered to me here. Tizo <laughs> indicates his understanding and is prepared to begin Sandra's trial. You know the formalities, of course. Show me then what you have learned thus far about the rites. Here, in this trial, it shall be just you, my Beyonders, and your lovely reader. Let us see how far, how you fare. Okay, let's see. They have all their greens. It's the three of them, the sisters. Ah, they are fast. Damn, they are fast. Dropped? Whoa, get out of the way. Dropped. Oh. Yeah, this is gonna be man. real freaking hard. People keep telling me to turn the uh difficulty up, but Oh come on, Tizo! Uh but I'm not entirely sure if I'm um Ooh, they have big auras. <gasps> I didn't get no, it. Oh, you were like an inch away from the platform. So I was. Oh good. Wait, where did the orb go? Oh, they keep passing it. Oh, whoa, she dodged you there. Yep. Take it's it okay. as far as you can. Ah. Oh, no. And they run incredibly they, yeah, fast. Yeah, they've gotten a huge speed boost. Do you have to use your implode ability? Is that what this is trying to get you to do? Uh, maybe? I don't, I don't know. We still have more health than they do, but they do how much damage? Oh, thank goodness. I, part of it is I also have to get my stride. I should probably do practice matches more often. Mm -hmm. Whoa! Yeah, they were very fast in charging those up, too. Come on, respawn! Nope. Oh, you almost respawned yeah, on her. You only have death. one more hit. Well, I think, doesn't Tease only take off 15? Dropped. I pressed shift. I pressed shift instead of W. Whoa, that was really lucky that you came back just in time, and there's only one. <gasps> oh no! Fuck! <laughs> Come on, respawn. Good. Gosh, this is like. Oh. Uh, I Come on, respawn. Yes. Okay. There we go. Yo. Got it. Whoa. But yeah, I always I always roll into Pyre Sessions kind of rusty because we only play this for a short period of time every day, which gets kind of hard. That was so close. It was super close. <laughs> Tizo is excited to have completed Sandra's challenge and awaits her approval. A worthwhile effort, Imp. Your performance was sufficient, and you passed my test. Your predecessor may well have approved. Thus, congratulations are in order to you and to your lovely reader. Now, farewell. 
Yeah, people keep asking me to turn up the difficulty, but like, I'm actually having trouble here. I... I may not seem like it, but these are actually challenging me. Tizo is happy to be back and wonders what it is that Sander granted you. You take a closer look at the new artifact in your possession. How's wing? Tizo's flutter and zip abilities cost less stamina than usual. Ooh, that's incredibly helpful. That means I can keep fluttering around and... Flying longer? I like that. That is a nice sound effect that they've got attached to it. Well, it seems to... No, it's gone. Is it going to be gone forever? Well, it's dead. I hope it respawns. <laughs> it will. It most definitely will. One way or another, this is actually a really good stopping point. So we'll see you guys in the next episode of Pyre. And as always, thanks for watching.